Let's turn to uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci, the transcript of his interview with, who was it, the Missouri AG? He was, right? He's been deposed um, in a lawsuit brought by the AGs, the attorney generals of both. C1 here. Yeah, so this is both Louisiana and Missouri. They have a lawsuit against the federal government, also against the Biden administration for allegedly colluding with social media companies to suppress speech. Um, and they were, so, Fauci was deposed, I believe, last week. Yesterday, the full transcript dropped, and it is long. I think it makes Fauci uh, <laughs> did not look uh, great. This is A.G. Landry. He's saying um, in his press release, Fauci's recent deposition only confirmed what we already knew. Federal bureaucrats in collusion with social media companies watch and control not only what you think, but especially what you say. During no time in human history was this more obvious than during COVID-19, where social engineering tactics were used against the American public not to limit your exposure to a virus, but to limit your exposure to information that did not fit within a government-sanctioned narrative. And you can see if if you read the full transcript, which is ex it's extremely long, he was deposed for a very long Almost time. Almost 500 pages or something. Yeah, it was an hours and hours of deposition on, on Fauci's behalf. Um, you can see, I mean, Fauci uses the term, I do not recall, the famous term, I do not recall, many, many, many times. <laughs> uh, he leans on that very, very heavily. Uh, I do not recall, I do not recall. And again, that's very common of people in <laughs> positions of power whenever they're deposed. The American public mm -hmm. is well aware of that. Um, and in a long deposition, you would imagine there would be some I do not recalls, but I want to put up the statement that we got from Justin Goodman um, with White Coat Waste Project. Uh, that's going to be, uh, yeah, let, let's pop that up on the screen because Justin, I reached out to him last night, White Coat Waste, we had him on the show a couple weeks back. They've been doing a lot of insanely good FOIA work um, that, and a lot of what we know about what the government knew in the early days of the pandemic has come from them. So Justin immediately uh, gave the statement to us here at counterpoints and said what really jumped out at me from this uh, deposition is that in his in the deposition Fauci definitively states at numerous points that it is quote impossible that the animal experiments that he funded in Wuhan could have sparked the pandemic. At the same time, he claims he, he's only vaguely familiar with the project he was funding there and that he barely knows the key pay players, including uh, some of these scientists and people may be familiar with Peter Daszak um, and Eco Health Alliance. And F Fauci, Justin says, cannot have it both ways. Hopefully the incoming House GOP majorities promise COVID origins investigation can refresh his memory and get the truth. All right. Ryan, I think that is a really big tension for Fauci. Mm -hmm. um, and in the deposition, he, you can see him repeatedly saying, I'm vaguely familiar with Dazak. I'm va vaguely familiar with the EcoHealth Alliance, but also is impossible. Impossible is what he's saying publicly, um, that the, the animal research here created the pandemic. Uh, the one, the, my favorite part was that he also doesn't know how to pronounce Dazak. Yes. Which I still don't. I've been reporting on the guy for two years. Let's just go with Dazak. Dazak. Go with Dazak. Dazak. <laughs> says, uh, the, the lawyer says, how do you say his name if you know? <laughs> and and uh, Fauci says, I'm not sure. I think it's Dazak. I think yeah. so. But completely unhelpful transcript because it just spells the name. Like, I need to go, <laughs> I need to go listen to the audio. Uh, and then he says, I, we've met once or twice. But I don't know. But we may, we, like, I'm not sure if we've met. Uh, and then he says there's a picture of us at a scientific conference, He's, which, and he rightly says, like, look, that happens a lot. I meet hundreds of people at scientific yep. conferences. They're like, oh, it's Dr. Fauci, let me get a picture. <laughs> they, they snap a selfie. Years long later, they might start a pandemic, and then now all of a sudden you're getting blamed for the pandemic because this yeah. person uh, snapped a selfie with you. But you're right that he consistently says, uh, yes, it's true that NIAID you know, funded EcoHealth Alliance, but this particular project? Did we fund that particular one? What, you know, you know, who knows? Well, and they so, also so get sure. into a ridiculous debate about gain of function. And this is something that you've covered a lot um, about Fauci and the medical establishment being very cagey about what the actual definition of gain of function is, because that might mean the grant that was given to EcoHealth Alliance, a government grant given to EcoHealth Alliance that I 
would have had to have been approved by Fauci. And he's saying in this deposition, it, was, it wasn't at, he doesn't think, he doesn't remember, but he doesn't think it was at his level. It may have been a deputy that it came across their desk, not his desk, something to that effect. Um, the, the money was going to something that was intentionally gain of function. There had been a cessation of a federal cessation of gain of funding for gain of function research. Um, and he's basically concedes at one point in this deposition, you know, one of the terms in the grant could mean amplifying the uh, the virus. Certainly could. Yeah. And so uh, just read, I'll just read a little tiny bit of that. The, the lawyer says, so you refer to conditions under which such research uh, should be done when you're, gen when you're generating potentially dangerous viruses. It's like, right. First of all, is that kind of research gen generally referred to as gain of function research? And here, I'll just stops. Right. Gain of function is, this is Fauci. Gain of function is a very potentially misleading terminology. Yes. And that was one of the reasons why several years ago, outside groups, not the NIH, made the determination that they would much more strictly define the guardrails of experiments that would require additional oversight and did away with the terminology gain of function because it can often be very confusing and misleading. So read between the lines of what he's saying there. The in order to stave off government regulation, these outside organizations said that they were going to self-regulate, mm -hmm. that they were gonna police themselves, put up their own guardrails, and also, by the way, they were gonna get rid of this pesky term, uh, gain of function, so that uh, if, if somebody comes asking, like, are you doing gain of function research over here? Well, there is no such thing really as gain of function research, and we've put up all of these, these guardrails. Right. Uh, and, and this is all of, this giant debate is happening between 2012, 2013, 2014. Uh, Obama, to his great credit, uh, I, didn't even, I wasn't even following this at the time, got, clearly got a very good briefing on this issue and was like, you know what, this looks dangerous. Mm -hmm. And he paused all gain of function research. Not long after the pause was lifted, uh, I guess the Trump campaign comes in, uh, Trump, Trump administration comes in, and Fauci, who has 40 years of bureaucratic knife fighting experience, is like, oh, cool, new administration, new rules, I can get this lifted. To get it lifted, a couple years later, we have, we have a pandemic. That alone does not prove anything, but the, the timeline is frightening that if, if, if what is uh, alleged to have happened in the Wuhan lab, did actually uh, did actually spark the the pandemic. It only took a couple of years mm -hmm. of this risky research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're still doing it, and we're doing it at a much greater clip around the world at this point. We hosted a few months back, I think it was over the summer, a debate between someone at MIT and someone at Johns Hopkins mm -hmm. on what gain of function is and if it's worth it. So I really, that was a, a very clarifying um, conversation. So if folks are interested in that, they can check it out. That was back at the Hill. Um, but it was fascinating to, to pit experts against each other because this is a question experts disagree on. Now, I think most of the public is probably in our camp run. That's like, this is, no, right. <laughs> stop. Yes, please, um, please, and please. so to, to Justin's point, the House GOP, now that we know they'll have the majority, McCarthy has said, he, he's told me, he's told other people that he absolutely will be investigating the origins of COVID. I think, though, that this deposition, which is hours long, hundreds of pages long, is a great glimpse into what that's going to look like if they put, if they try to get Fauci to testify. I don't think he has any fear of testifying. Mm -hmm. That's why he goes on every different show that'll have him. Um, people, you know, want, he, he wants to talk to people. He's arrogant to the point where he thinks he can explain a way that he can uh, basically talk through any of these questions. Um, so I, I don't know how productive it is to continue uh, the investigating, continue probing Fauci because he's he doesn't admit to anything. He says, you know, he'll, he'll get into these. At one point, the <laughs> attorney uh, basically says, you know, stop going on tangents uh, in the deposition because it does seem to be an intentional sort of deflection technique where he's talking for a really long time and, and going in different directions in order to uh, distract from one question or another. So if House Republicans want to get to the bottom of this, I know that Fauci is a headline grabber. Um, I doubt that Fauci himself is, that you're going to get any productive lines of inquiry out of Fauci himself at this point because he is ready to talk in circles around absolutely anyone without revealing pretty much anything. 
Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.